So I cooked some of my um, cochineal to make some dye, and I'm just going to be putting some of the dye mixture onto my little card. So I figured, well, I'll go live and see if anybody's awake. I know it's midnight. <laughs> But uh, I figured I'd do that because I was going to film it anyway. And I thought, well, if somebody's here, somebody's here. So before I put it on the card, before I actually put it on the card, in case there's any insomniacs out there, um, this is the neutral one. So we can kind of see the color that we're going to end up having. I'm not sure if you can see that too well. Hey, Nancy. Scotty's awake too. Oh, she's in Mountain View. Woohoo! Yeah, I was I was going to um, put this down on my my little sample card, so I figure ah, let's just go wide and, and see who's let's see who's up. Oh, Lucy's up too. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I got the cochineal right, and um, when you first do it, before you do any dyeing at all. Um, you put it in the water and you simmer it for about 15 minutes. And then after that, then um, whatever you're going to decide to put into the dye bath, then you're going to throw it in there. And, um, and I think you're going to simmer it. Well, you know, okay, let me take it back. You know how I keep telling you simmer, 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 simmer. Well, the cochineal, you can actually boil this stuff. I've read various places where the temperature doesn't, you know, it doesn't hinder it if, if you boil it. So what I'll do is I'm going to decide out of all these colors what I like the best. Or maybe I'll do two batches. I don't know. And then um, I'll make two different pots with two different mordants and then go from there. So here we go with. And what I found interesting here is I'm using two different kinds of papers. Hi, Auntie Mae. Um, hi, Lucy. Um, what um, is interesting here, look at this. This is watercolor paper. And then this is mixed media. And look, you know, look at the difference in the color. So whatever the part of the composition is on that paper, it really made a big difference. And so you can see how when you're putting in your materials in there, it's going to make a big difference also. So I stuck a little piece. I stuck a little piece of cotton in here. Now, these work better with, um, um, whoopsie, protein type fabrics. And then this is just a synthetic, so it's not going to do all that much at all. And none of these have a mordant on them. So this is like pre-mordant. But when I decide what color I'm going to use, then I will go ahead and um, put some kind of a mordant on them. But look, it's kind of a cool color already. So that is... I know that mixed media paper, it's like a... Um, a grayish purple color it's really cool okay so that's that and these have just been sitting in there for maybe five minutes or so <laughs> I know I'm up late Andy all the time I don't go to bed till like about two o'clock um, so this isn't like late for me yet <laughs> I still got a couple hours to go okay this I put in, I have a, um, a plastic thing where I have some of, um, um, like rusty water. When I do my rusty fabrics and stuff, I'll wring them out, all the water out of the fabric. And I save some of that to use with other things. So I put a little bit of the rusty water in here and it makes a little bit of a difference. Again, look at the paper, um, how it's doing completely different colors. Here is the watercolor 
and here is the mixed media. So kind of cool. And then then here is a little bit of ribbon. And then the fabric. Cotton with no mordant. Okay, so that's the iron one. Hey, Sherry. I'm, I'm finding out who's the insomniacs in the group. Well, well, I guess it obviously depends what, where you're living compared to me. Okay, cream of tartar I put in here, and look what that did. Now, that looks orange, but look at the papers again. Very odd. Oopsie. Doesn't look as vibrant on on the monitor, but this is pretty bright. Well, you can see how bright it is in here. And oh yeah, you can you can tell on the fabric. <laughs> it's just a little orange. <laughs> and then on there. Where's Jennifer when you need her? The orange lady. Auntie, how's your kitty doing? Is he being able to eat a little bit better? Okay, so that's cream of tartar. Then in this one, I put some alum. And look at that. This almost looks when I did the um, the poke berries. Very similar to that. Woo, look at that. Very cool. And again, the ribbon is not going to do that much. Synthetic. So, well, it did take a little bit of the color. All righty. Kind of cool. Okay, so that was with alum. That way, if you guys are going to do it, you can decide, um, you know, which one you want to do if you don't want to do all of them. Okay, this is soda ash. Oh, he's got his meds. Oh, that's good. Okay, so... So to ash, it got purpley, but not that gray purple and not that really super, super bright one either. It's kind of in the middle. And then, look at that. Ah, Cochineal is just fantastic, people. If you like bright stuff, whoops, did I forget to put, oh, there it is. If you're into vibrancy, this is, this is the ticket, guys. All right, vinegar. Whoa, look at this, guys. I wish I knew it was the makeup of this paper. Look. <laughs> you would never think it came out of the same concoction. Again, that lets you know how when you do your fabrics, they're all going to be different. And see, this one's nice, a nice orange. So you can see the acidic, the vinegar is acid and so is cream of tartar. So if you're going for any type of an orangey color, that's the ticket, acid. 
And then we got the baking soda. And again, not as big a difference, but definitely a difference. You wouldn't think that they came out of the same one either. And then there's the fabric. Whoopsie. There we go. So I'm going to scoot these out a little bit. I'm going to put them on the paper and see how it prints out on here. I'm going to put a couple of squares. The neutral. I know I had a dog. How many years ago was this? I'm trying to remember. It's got to be. Wow. Can't believe how time goes. It's got to be like eight or nine years, I guess. And he started losing weight, and we found out he had a tumor. He had cancer. And we did the, you know, equivalent to chemo, you know, the medication they gave him and stuff like that. But I think like $3,000 later. There wasn't much that could be done for him. He was such a sweet dog. When we were living in Hawaii, he just showed up one day. <laughs> just showed up. And we asked neighbors. Nobody, nobody claimed him. So we kept him. And when we moved here to Arkansas, we flew him out with the rest of our critters. And while we had him, somebody stole him. And uh, he was gone for like almost three weeks. And we were told after a couple of days, you know, you're never going to get your, your dog back. And we can, I mean, we didn't forget about him, but we gave up the possibility of getting him back. And then one day I'm in the living room. And there in the back slider, um, I see a dog. And I didn't recognize him because he had lost so much weight. And I go, I told Richard, there's a dog in the back over there. What is he doing? And I guess my tone of voice scared him. And he started running down the driveway. And I said, Richard, it's Petey. So my husband runs out there and tries to talk to him real nice. So he'd come back and he was skinny and he comes into the house. He didn't even drink anything or eat anything. He just laid down on this area rug we had and he must have slept for like eight hours straight. And, um, and that's when I told Richard, oh no, if only he could talk. We would definitely have a Walt Disney movie <laughs> where he went, what they did to him, how he came back home. Oh, my gosh. That's the right one. Yeah. And he um, he was a pit bull mixture. And his jaws, oh my gosh. If he wanted to, he could have been pretty mean, but he wasn't. He was a big baby. And when at toward the end when he was sick. He, uh, 
I don't know if it was the cancer or the medication or whatever, but um, he had really loose bowel movement. So whenever he would say, you know, let me out, it was like right now. Well, one day we had to go out. I can't even, I don't remember where we went and because we weren't leaving him alone. So I'm not even really sure why both of us were gone. And he so did not want to do it. Just a show. He never wanted to do anything wrong. He went out of his way to do everything right. He with in his weakened state. Um, he jumped out of the window. Through the screen to go to the bathroom so he wouldn't mess in the house. <laughs> it's like, how can you be mad at a dog breaking your screen? Because he didn't want to mess up in the house. Cream of tartar. And we're getting some orange there. He was a great dog. He really was. But, you know, everybody that has an animal, they got great stories about their animals. Okie dokie. All right, so we got neutral, iron, cream of tartar. Now we'll do the alum. Alum. So I guess you know what next month's color is. <laughs> In case you didn't guess, it's the 17th. Oh, maybe it'll be this month. I don't know. It depends what I end up doing with it. If I'm going to do fabric or fabric and paper or a combo. I had a little bit of the matter left over, just a tiny bit. And I did some um, some eco print, but I had to dilute it so much. It didn't even really look like matter, but it added a nice little, nice little color to the papers. I'll show it to you in a bit. Um, this is the watercolor paper. I should have done it on that other one, right? Because that was the cool one. I'll do that on the other one, too, once, once, after I do this. This watercolor. And then we'll do the, uh, the mixed media in a second. All right. Soda ash. Soda ash. Now, see, those two are almost the same. But they look different on the paper. And the cotton fabric looks different. So did most of you uh, escape all of that harsh weather? It was pretty bad in Texas, you guys. And I'm sure parts, you know, further southeast, I saw there was quite a few hailstorms and tornadoes and stuff. We were supposed to get a storm tonight. It never came. It went south of us, so fortunate for that but we're supposed to have a storm not tomorrow but Sunday so we'll see what happens all right this one's got vinegar uh -oh. I'm dripping
Now this neutral one looks a little bit on the almost like a gray side. And in the books that I've looked at that I've read, it says that the neutral is more like this, like pink. So maybe they put more more cochineal in there then, you know. You know, Nancy, yesterday was it was it yesterday? Yesterday, I think they had tornado warnings up in Michigan. It was crazy. Everybody was watching Texas. And then Ryan goes, whoa, there's some stuff in Ohio and in Michigan. <laughs> He's going, what the heck's going on up there? I don't remember what part of the state it was. Okay, this is baking soda. Okay, so I'll put that to the side and then I'll set up a page with the um, with the mixed media paper I was using. Let's see if I can move this without it dripping all over the place. Let me find the paper first that I was using. And then we shall see. All right. I think it was just the... Uh, yeah, just the next meeting. Handsome. Is that the name of the company? You know which one I mean. Yeah. So. So. Let me. Woo! I knew that was going to happen. Here, let me put this on something flat before I pick it up. So, 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 let me go ahead and draw the lines again because I never do anything straight. <laughs> it's just not going to work. I think I did that one every inch and a half. I'll do the same thing. Do the same thing. See what happens. Jennifer, we did some, we did some orange. We, we turned our cochineal into some orange. It's so exciting. Look. Woohoo. Came out kind of cute. Came out kind of cute. I was doing some reading. I had read some stuff about the cochineal, but it didn't get into like great, great, great detail. But it was kind of interesting, the history of it. Um, in um, writings and, you know, um, um, whoops, D different historical writings 
they, you start hearing about the cochineal around the 1500s and um, you know the rich and the aristocratic and the you know kings queens whoever was ruling they're you know how they're always looking for something unique and different to separate them from the common people and during that period of time the color of red was kind of hard to extract a dye to do a red a real red and the closest that came to it was a used lac which is also coincidentally from a bug but it wasn't a rich rich red and so when they discovered when i say they i think it was the spaniards when they went traversing they came across um you know the indigenous people in um in the americas used central mexico peru place like that they were using they had red and they're going where are you getting the red from and um and then they started using the indigenous people slave labor to get the cochineal just so they could take it back to take it back to their leader <laughs> And, um, you know, it became one of those things where, you know, it has a kind of a sad beginning. Okay, there we go. So today, it's, um, they harvest the cochineal from the Oaxaca area, um, parts of Peru and Argentina, and also on the Canary Islands. So when you buy it, that's probably where it came from. Okay, so we're gonna try this paper and see what happens, guys. See if it makes a big difference. I think it'll make the big difference when it dries, actually. Now, see, this isn't very absorbent. Look how it's leaving these. Um... Huh, that's weird. It's mixed media, and it's not absorbing the water. Okay. And I also didn't know that they use they use this dye for cosmetics and for food. Oh. So you might be eating bug, bug juice when you didn't know. <laughs> On, or washing your face with bug juice. <laughs> bug dye. Okay. Now, yeah, we'll do the iron. But look how different, guys. This is what it looks like. Well, it's because it's soaking in there.
Okay, Auntie. Take care. I know you're probably not getting good sleep being a, a good nurse to your kitty cat. And interesting, it's only the female bug that they extract the color from. Female has these, I forget if it's in their footsies or their mouth, but they have these little hook-like things and they stick it into the cactus and they kind of like lodge themselves into it and then the male comes and fertilizes her eggs and um, once he fertilizes the eggs he no longer eats and then he dies so his his life okay this is a cream of tartar his life is short-lived and she's literally stuck on the cactus The ironies of life. You want to have sex and die or you want to be stuck on a cactus? Make your choice. <laughs> hey, Leslie. We're just here talking about the cochineal sex life, that's all. <laughs> all righty. Now, look how this is. Um, okay, this is interesting. Look how this is um, where it's soaking in. It's just like that color, like the pinky color. It'll be interesting. Remember when we did some of the other ones when that oxidizes, you know, and it's kind of like the air hits it? Who knows? <laughs> this might this might do the same thing. I don't know. We'll see. We won't know till tomorrow though, after it's all dry. All right, so this is the alum. Oops, that bled in. That's okay. It'll look cool. I think next week if we don't have, you know, too much rain. I hope we have sun next week. I forget. I forgot to look. I think I'm going to do, ooh, look how that bled in there. How cool that looks. I want to do some cyanotype. Um, next week. It is. Alrighty. Soda ash. Oops, did I clean my brush? Forget. <laughs> I don't know how soothing my voice is. Okay, soda ash.
These look very similar right now. What cyanotype? Cyanotype, um, it's a chemical, first of all. It's a chemical. Uh, and I really don't even know the component of the chemical now that you ask. I think I knew at one point and I already forgot. Because <laughs> before I do something, I always do research, but I, you know, I did research on that like five years ago. So I think it's like left my brain, but it's a chemical that reacts to sunlight. And so when you see those prints that people do, that looks like a blueprint, basically, you know, it, it's the same. Um, it's what they literally what they used to use for to make blueprints when they were real blueprints in the old days. And, um, and so you, you, uh, you mix up the concoction. It's like, you know, the, it's liquid like water, but it's uh, a chemical. I'll show it to you in a second. Oops. Uh, vinegar now. And, um, you have to put it on the paper in a dark room. Cause you got to think about like a real photograph. And um, then you have to let it dry. Oh, that doesn't look too good. You have to let it dry and keep it in a dark spot because you don't want it to be exposed to light. And then when you want to, when you want to use it, you bring it out and you put on top of it whatever. Like you can put transparencies over it, like like you would a negative. Um, most of the stuff I do, because I like nature stuff, I use plants. And so then you lay, let's just say you have a fern, you lay the fern on top of that treated paper. And then so that the fern doesn't fly away, you put a piece of glass or pexy glass, whatever you have, to hold it in place. Put it out in the sun. And depending on the intensity of the sun where you're at and the weather and the time of year and so on and so forth you leave it out there for x amount of time and you go back and you check it and you'll know when yours is done because the paper turns a blue um because when you start off it's it's a light color almost white so when that happens then you know the chemicals have taken effect and then you wash it in a solution of water and what I already forgot. Water and oh, I already forgot. I already forgot. I have to go look at my notes. <laughs> and um, is it water and and baking soda? Oh, I don't remember. I think so. Uh, oh. Speaking of which, this is baking soda in case, in case you're taking notes, boys and girls. And, um, and then you just let it dry and you have a cyanotype. Look it up on Pinterest. You'll see how beautiful people get very creative with it. We did a caboodle kit with cyanotype the first year that we did it. I, I put the chemicals on the paper and sent out the papers to you guys and yeah that was fun yeah i don't remember vin uh, I'm gonna say, i don't remember vinegar i don't remember Jen jennifer isn't that weird i mean i've done i've done this i don't know how many times and i i forgot what i supposed to put it i think i have too many of these things on my mind now and now I forget what I put for the cyanotype. But, uh, yeah, you don't have to put the other thing that we put in there. You just need to, for sure, you need to wash it under some running water for a few minutes to get the chemical off. And then if you just leave it out after you, you know, remove the chemical, then it takes a period of time, but it does its thing and it gets deeper and deeper blue. But if you want to accelerate that blueness, hi, Pinky. Um, yeah, like the, I call it oxidation, but I, that's not what it is. But 
if you want to make that more rapid, then you add that other thing to the water. And, and when you go like that, you literally, just like when you do a, a, a print, you, you see the blue, you know, turning right before your eyes. It's kind of cool. All right. Look at this, guys. We know it's going to be different when it's done. That's a given from the other one. You can already see how different it is. So let me grab this one. And let me go put that over there. Whoa. Now what did I step on? Okay, so there's various ways you can purchase the um, the cyanotype. You can get this right here. I forget how many how many prints you can get out of this. Well, why don't you read Rosemary? You can probably find out. Does it say? I don't see where it says how many prints, how many pieces of paper you can cover with this. Whoa, knocked out my glasses. Maybe it shows it in the front. Let's see. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Okay, it says right here approximately 65 8 by 10 prints. So that's how many pieces of paper this will cover. And um, this is like in powder form, and you have to add liquid to it just water and then it, you have to do that like 24 hours before you're actually going to use it and um and you need to use these bottles because they're black and you don't want light to hit it so that'll stop the light from getting to it and you mix these together and blah 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 and you have your there's an example there of what the cyanotypes look like the prints or you can get the larger ones and just mix it yourself. It, this is this is what's in here. So um, cochineal is a bug. <laughs> it's a bug. I don't think I have any. I think I, I got rid of all my science type prints that I have when I made a couple of a uh, couple of journals. I think I put them all in there. Give me one second. If I have some, I know where it would be. But I think they're all gone. Yeah, I don't have any, but you can also get, hold on one second, and if you don't want to do any of that, where is that? And if you don't want to go through all that trouble, you can buy paper. I can't open it because then, you know, it will... Uh, <laughs> start activating but this is the same stuff and the paper has already already has the um the chemical on it and then you just take the paper out put whatever it is you want on there and you're ready to go so there's a lot of different ways you can uh 
get the product. You can mix it yourself, put it on the papers yourself, or get it like that. And you can get all of that stuff on Amazon too. I know that the um, the powder stuff, the one that was in the two bottles, you can get those like at, I used to anyway, you can get those like at Michael's or Hobby Lobby and places like that. But for sure, you can still get them on um, on Amazon. So anyway, so for those of you who just got here, let's show you some of these cool colors we got. And we, we found out that paper has a lot to do with it. They come out all different. This one is neutral. But, you know. <laughs> And it's, it's gotten darker since we've just been here, too. It's changed a lot. And then there's the fabric. And a little synthetic ribbon. It doesn't like synthetic stuff. I put a little of... Um, a little rusty water in here and it turns it a really cool purple good night and there's that look that's kind of cool cream of tartar turns it an orangey color Oopsie. I'm not sure why the paper isn't turning orange, but the fabric certainly is. And the alum. Very grapey Kool-Aid color. And very lovely on the fabric. So to ash. So you think of all those cool dresses that we looked at when we were doing Oaxaca. And you can see how a lot of these colors were derived in that traditional clothing okay this is with vinegar different kind of orange and last one baking soda oopsie Not as dark, but really pretty. So there you go. So I think I used um, most of the, um, you know, different the different things that we've been using. I don't think I left any of them out, did I? No, I don't think so. It's a vinegar. I didn't do the lemon, but the, the vinegar and the lemon, they pretty much do the same thing because it's, you know, all the acid. So I didn't have another little thing, but that's what the that's what the lemon would have done. It had done the same thing as the vinegar. So it had been a different shade of orange, basically, is what I'm saying. So, so if you guys decide that um, you know it's something you want to do, you can get some pretty good purples. Now, what I didn't get, I'm gonna have to play around with something tomorrow. I didn't get red, red. You're supposed to be able to get red. And I didn't get red. I don't know why. That's kind of weird. Because that's not red. That's more like a, a wine color. So I'm going to have to see. Because the neutral is supposed to be more red. And this is the neutral one. 
And that doesn't look red to me. So, and th these d definitely don't look red. So. <laughs> So I got to go play with that tomorrow and see how I can get red. That is the mystery, guys. Um, I was ready to describe the bugs and boiler in the pot. Um, you can do you can do it both ways, Lucy. Well, three ways, Lucy. It comes. Grant, let me go get it. Let me go get it. So usually this is how it comes. It just comes with the dried pieces, parts of that stuff that, you know, what the bugs turn into. That's what that is. These aren't literally the bugs. They're, it's that callus that grows on the bug. It's part of the bug, but like if you look at this, this is not a bug. Okay. So you can throw this in the pot just like that. You can um, put it in a little, you know, muslin little bag, a little tie bag, and throw it in. Or you can grind it up in a powder and throw it in, or grind it up in a powder and also put it in the little pouch. Um, I was very lazy. I just did this impromptu. I just threw these in the water. I didn't do any. I didn't do any of the above. So it's just a matter of. Um, you know, your preference, basically. Yep. Whatever your little heart desires. It'll work either way. Um, if you're looking for, if you're going to um, do extractions afterwards, then I would put it in the little pouch. And then when you're done with, with this, then throw that back in there and you'll get a different... Um, generation of color and you can keep doing that until you know no more color comes out and then you'd have a variety of of shades that way too so all right ladies i just wanted to share this with you guys i was having fun and i thought uh oh i might as well share that with some of the insomniacs so <laughs> any questions about what we've done so far is that about it's kind of you know kind of clear cut but if you have any questions feel free to ask before we say the final good night people yeah that orange one did come out nice huh leslie i like it too that's why jennifer likes the cream of car tartar that's right and the vinegar they both came out kind of cool Boy, but a difference with the papers, though. Look at that. Even though they're both orange, look how different the papers came out between the cream of tartar and the vinegar. That's pretty wild. I did a little experiment with the country. Oh, well, go ahead and grab me good one. Yeah. Yeah, that can happen because this doesn't, in this form, it doesn't dissolve. The color comes out, but it doesn't dissolve. So you're going to get little specks. And even if you grind it, you know, um, it, it might even do the little specks. If you want a super, super clean dye, dye bath, then I would put it in a little, a little pouch of some kind. I know, Jennifer. I am, too. Yeah, I don't know about the glisten. The glisten may have been, you know, that touching it. I don't know. That I don't know. But for sure, you know, putting it in a little pouch will protect anything from happening besides actual dye. Yeah. 
All right, ladies. Well, you have a good weekend. And um, I hope I have sun next week. I'd like to do some of my cyanotype stuff. And then I'll show you guys what I end up doing. All right, ladies. Have fun. Thank you for showing up. And um, next time we get together, I'll show you the results of those papers also that we did all these colors on. All right. Good night, everybody. Take care. Watch the weather. <laughs> Good night.